What's up guys, it's the boy X is here and today I'm gonna be doing another tutorial on Photoshop. Uh I know it's been uh constantly uploading with tutorials and tutorials and back after back, but um I, I just wanna let you know that since I got this mic is really helping me stay active, so please don't hate on like I post a video like every day. Well it's kinda good so um, so yeah, let's get started to this tour tutorial. So, um, as you can see, like on my last upload, I mean, last tutorial, I uploaded how to make, uh, like, soft effects and soft blurs on your wedding photos. Well, as you can see, this background, well, I didn't get to make the image, but I made the effects on it, as you can see, is very dark, very modern, it's very good. I think it's a very good effect. So, let's get started. As you can see, this is the normal photo. Like, so take the difference of it. Let's just look at the difference. Oh, fail. Yeah, you can see the difference. The colors is much more contrasted and stuff. And if you haven't taken a look at my last tutorial on how to um make the effect with the elliptical tool, please go check it out. It'll help you a lot if you don't want to take the while to um watch what I'm gonna do so yeah alright so the first thing you wanna do you wanna have this background any type of background is good I'm just gonna try to, this tutorial is basically how to make any photo look more realistic and contrasted so as you can see I'm just gonna hold down shift make a perfect circle over the place you want it to be have the effect on center it if you if you can or if you want to it's not going to be the best I made, but I want to try to make it look like the best. Alright, then you want to go to um, Select, Modify, Feather, Feather it by 55 pixels. Again, if you have a high-res photo, any pixels is fine, but I, I suggest that you do as I do. So then you want to hold down Control, Shift, or Command, Shift for Mac users. Control Shift I, that'll invert the layers, and then simply just press Control or Command J, that'll just pop it on onto its own layer. And then what you want to do is hit Control J again, making a new new layer. Uh, make the layer one copy invisible, then go to layer one, and then simply go to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur. And then leave it at 8.0 .8 pixels for a high res photo. Press OK. And then go back to your layer 1 copy. Make that visible again. Go to filter, blur, filter, blur, radial blur. And then lower the amount to at least 25. Alright. Then go to blur method, zoom, quality, best if you want to wait the while to render, and good. Uh, for the sake of this video, I'll just press good for the sake of this video to conserve time. Press OK, let it render, let it render, or whatever it does. As you can see, it made that very nice blur effect. And then, oh, sorry about that. Uh, uh, all right, whatever. That's just my clan chat. All right, then you want to go to. All right, then you want to go to layer. New fill layer, solid color. Press OK. This will make it any color. Just press OK. Skip that, and then you want to go to. Color. As you can see, I made an overlay of that um, recent color. Click double tap on the color. Again, I suggest a very orange color. It doesn't matter if it's bright. Just press OK. And then you want to go to select. No, wait. You want to select. Sorry. You want to go to new adjustment layer on layer. And then go to curves. Press curves. Press OK. Doesn't matter, and then simply grab your black dot tool.
tool, whatever. Fill in the black layers. See, it makes a nice contrast. Go to gray. Gore. You can even go to white. Well, undo the white. Sorry. Alright, whatever. I just control Z it. Alright, fail. Okay, whatever. That's pretty nice effect. And go to color back to your um of uh, color fill layer, and then lower the opacity to enough that you can see all the colors like the blue and stuff. So I give it uh not too not don't lower the opacity too much. I think like seventy or seventy five gives it the best effect in my opinion. Yeah, 75 gives it the best effect in my opinion. And then once you do that, simply go to your background layer after you do the curves and then press Control J. It'll make a copy of your background layer. And then you want to go to Filter, Blur, Radial Blur again, but this time you want to put the amount 20 as much as you did last time. So it'll make it to a 45. And then was blur method at zoom and quality at good or best. Press OK. Let it render. Check that link out. I don't know what that is. Okay. Let it render. Alright, as you can see, I made another blur effect. Lower the opacity just a little so you can still see the sun rising okay once you do that then you're done with that then you wanna make a new layer or control J and then go to filter render clouds once you do that you wanna go to overlay it makes it a very nice a uh, very nice, like, I don't know what to call it, like, colory aurora effect. Low, lower the opacity. Lower the opacity so you can still see the colors popping out. Uh, I give it at least a 51. And then simply go to your, go to filter, again, render, this time lens flare. Make the lens flare, it'll usually be even in the middle, but make the lens flare go directly on top where you can see the dot. Press OK. I don't know if you can see it well on my screen, I see it kind of well. And, yeah, so then after that, simply hold down Shift, click on your background layer, and then um, go right click, and then press Merge Layers. And then that will make every effect as one. Every effect as one, as you can see. And then go to, simply go to Image, Adjustments, Curves. And then you just want to lighten it. Lighten it. Darken it. And then right in the middle, lighten it. I'll give it a nice effect. In my opinion, it's pretty nice. That's what I think. And yeah, this has been X Crayola's. Um, yeah, peace out.